it's not a matter of if, but it's a matter of when. You're going to find pretty quickly that, that it's an interesting group. Go Plow! Let's do it! <laughs> Combining art with science and technology is one of my favorite things. We are about to win the autonomous snowplow competition of the Institute Navigation. The autonomous snowplow competition is a outreach program from the Institute of Navigation in which we are trying to promote the navigation technologies as used to autonomously drive various vehicles, including lawnmowers, snowplows, and eventually our own automobiles. The idea is that you'll have to be able to go out and autonomously plow a segment of snow that would simulate a, a sidewalk in the city or perhaps a small driveway. Um, these plows have to go out and do that without the, any human intervention for driving. The rules are pretty strict here that we're doing today, and it's a matter of being able to use these autonomous systems to be able to push snow out of the way, and not just off the front and the back, but off to the sides too. Last year, a Dearborn team came in second place. Who did they come in first place this year? Yeah. Yeah. Way to go! Who are you going to call? 1-800 Snow Plow! Let's do it! <laughs> Once again, it's the snowplow maker the decisions. There is no human elements with it right now. This is the first time Canada has been part of the competition, which officially makes us an international competition. Well, the biggest aspiration, I think, is really to help uh, students understand guidance, navigation, and control. What's their approach? How are they going about coming up with their, their snowplow, their hardware? Every year we see these get better and better and the technology get more viable and uh, it's just fun to see the progress. Yeah, this is, a, this is a great event to participate in. It gives you an opportunity to do real world design. Uh, you also get to interact with real world engineers who are doing real world design. Yeah. The goal is to avoid the obstacles. Hi, we're at the um, 2015 snow, Autonomous Snowplow Competition in St. Paul, Minnesota. And uh, this is our team from the University of Calgary, Canada. Uh, we just finished this single eye course, and uh, we're pretty happy with how we did. I think that was our fastest run today. No? How do you guys think we did? I think we did pretty well. We we accomplished everything we were hoping to accomplish. We uh, we got. It looks like. Over 90% of the snow out. Um, looks like we have a little bit on the left side, but that's it. Um, and uh, I think overall we did a pretty good job. You know, sometimes when you have the, the hardware prototype, you think, okay, we're ready to go, but then you find the bugs as the software starts getting written. Simple is always good. Um, you don't want to be too complex because you're getting out there in, in very, very treacherous winter conditions. Yeah. You're gonna hit enter, right. and then when we hit e stop, you're gonna hit control C, right. and then when I say now, hit. Oh, wait, you make right. it go? All right, it There it goes. We're not using a lot of our navigational aids and sensors that we uh, are planning to use tomorrow. We're gonna to premiere some of those tomorrow. Uh, right now, we were most go mostly going on dead reckoning, head in a certain direction, and just move that way. Uh, but tonight, I think we're going to test a lot of our other things, such as wheel encoders, IMU. Um, the GPS is kind of bad in this area, so we, we weren't able to depend on that like we like we wanted to. We use a differential GPS system with an antenna and a base station way over there. We get about a centimeter of accuracy on our position. We're not using really expensive $18,000 GPS system. It's a very simple $400 sensor that reads its location on the magnetic track. <laughs> And so that keeps our real-time location. We stayed in the boundaries really well. We didn't uh, have any boundary infractions. And uh, we sort of mapped this snow out as we go um, in our software. And uh, that mapping process worked really well. We're really excited to try out obstacle detection uh, uh, with our LiDAR. Tomorrow we hope to have our obstacle avoidance software working. We were unfortunately not able to implement that today. Um, but we hope to have that working and I'll be able to show it off at tomorrow's competition. Our biggest limitation right now is uh, it avoids obstacles, um, but it doesn't avoid obstacles if they're really close to a boundary because it gets into this boundary obstacle kind of dilemma, uh, which means it's slowly 
knocks over the obstacle. Uh, so we'd probably improve that um, in terms of just allowing it to go a little bit into the boundary while it's avoiding the obstacle. So here's the deal, guys. I think because you, yeah. we plowed 70% of the snow. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't take a single deduction. a single deduction at all. We didn't knock the post Other down. Than we didn't return to garage. Other, but that's yeah. a bonus. That's okay, not that's a deduction. A okay, I got you. deductions. All of our snow is in the plow snow zone. Yeah. We get 70% of what we do. But I wish we had a way to know what was happening. You know, I'd like to know what our battery voltage was at that point. I'd like to know what our duty cycle was on motors at that point. Today, we had a lot more working. We spent a lot of time last night getting sensors figured out. Our GPS was dead on. It was, it was great today. Um, and we added some, uh, some prototype or um, kind of experimental sensors that we're gonna be using in the future. Got some data from that. So as far as the sensors goes, um, everything was a lot more together. So we don't want to disturb stone in the middle. You guys can do whatever you want, just ride the blue border. No, 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 no. Well, our, our strategy was we set up our track around the outside perimeter first. So we, we knew we were going to hit that curve. We knew we were going to plow both sides or the outer portions of the track. So we, we ran that, it ran beautifully, we held our track, we pushed the snow, it went great. Um, we tried to do a curve to get back into the, the middle section, and our track got a little knocked around by the snow, and we just didn't catch that. It was pretty small chances anyway. So we took a 10% deduction on the, the reset, and uh, actually ran a blind run. We were not using any navigation uh, during that middle run. And uh, our wonderful Tim Easter, the programmer, had our encoders working great, so even without a nav, we ran straight as an arrow. So we did the reset, ran through the middle again, and uh, pushed a bunch more snow and really added those points up. We had a very successful run. Um, we were really happy with it. It cleared all, most of the snow off the field and only ran into one obstacle, left the other one, stopped back in the garage, no boundary infractions. So it was like almost as good as it gets. Yeah, you know, we, we uh, we talked about it and we were almost gonna not reset and make that other run and just be happy with what we had. And uh, you know, we talked it over, we took a vote and it, it worked out in our favor. We, we made the right play today. So we're happy, we had a lot of fun this weekend. We've had a lot of fun working on the robot. We're not done. Uh, we'll be working throughout the year and we'll, we'll definitely be back next year. This Institute of Navigation Snowplow Competition is training the next generation of navigation engineers, systems engineers, electrical and mechanical engineers. You know, to, to solve difficult problems, to run into problems they don't know how to solve and to come up with other strategies, it's part of the learning process. Each one of the, the elements that you go through in terms of the overall design and then and detailed implementation of it is scored all the way down to commercialization, which is a really important part of the design process. Not only can you do the techn technical problem, but could you actually build something like this and get, uh, get, a, get a return on it? The whole challenge of reducing the cost of labor is an important uh, challenge for us. How do, we, how do we help our customers be more efficient in what they do? It, it's gonna happen, and uh, it's just a matter of how do we make it happen. We highly encourage you to be involved with next year's event and be a competitor. Go to the website and hope to see you next year.